This summer, L.L. Bean invites you to simply step outside and enjoy the fresh air and sunshine. We'll be your guide with tips and advice to get more out of every moment outdoors. Here's one. If you want to always have a quick patch and repair kit on your camping trip, wrap a few feet of duct tape around a water bottle or hiking pole. When you need a piece, simply peel one off. For more fun ideas, easy how-tos, and inspiring stories, visit llbean.com slash guide. Finding the right person for the job isn't easy. Just ask someone who hired a drama coach to be an IT guy. Yeah, I'm having trouble logging in. I'm not buying it. Say it again, this time with feeling. I can't log in? Come on, man. I want to feel your struggle. But if you've got an insurance question, you can always count on your local GEICO agent. They can bundle your policies, which could save you hundreds. Now, like your life depends on it. I can't log in. Yes, we'll make an actor out of you yet. For expert help with all your insurance needs, visit geico.com slash local today. Junior Doctors, Your Life in Their Hands, 2011, Episode 1. This is an emergency, a typical night in A&E. Like in a battlefield, language... Full of twenty somethings after a big night out. Lots of vomit, lots of unconscious bodies lying around. But not everyone is a casualty. Squeeze my fingers, please. Taking care of them is an army of doctors the same age. They've had five years of training, caught at rest and in A and E, and a rigorous induction into hospital life. Take full advantage of being in a bloody good city and a bloody good NHS trust. Hello? It's an emergency. Never done this before? Now they will face the reality of life on the bit or wards. You're Skibby, the wall bitch. You're looking at my badge it's as if to say, Who are you? What do you know? We've been f- following seven junior doctors at work and at home. Twenty three year old Adam is from a family of medics. There's a massive pedigree within the family that I have to live up to. Cambridge Catherine 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 I definitely feel I have a lot to work on things. If you want to achieve something, animal lover Lucy24, but if I'm feeling, getting, feeling stressed, you'll probably see it. If I'm feeling a bit emotional, I might have to bite my lip. If I get embarrassed, I blush. Inspiring surgeon and Andy25, I was bleep. He laughs calm. As cool in cool. I'm cool in a judicious word, sense of the word. Why not off buff? Wine buff, Kia, Kia. Bit of show off at times. Rather lonely but sensitive. Very, very useful to me in the medicine. Rabbi Captain John. As a medical student, you have to no responsibilities. Whereas student doctor, the buck stops with you. The party girl, Susie. Somebody's life in your hands. I'm 24. Let's go, massive thing. They will be working and two. Of Newcastle's busiest hospitals. He groans, caught at rest, dealing with life and death situations. She just been told, you're going home to die. And sometimes a bizarre, I saw a man had a toilet brush up his bottom. Please, but are they up to the job? You're doing well, sir. You're doing well. I guess if I really mess up, I would kill somebody, someone. The doctors were grown up. I don't feel as though we, I'm grown up. I still at my death. It's more scary than, uh, and, uh, than exciting. Newcastle upon time, party city of the northwest. Where your seven junior doctors are sharing this, where are the, your, our seven doctors, junior doctors are sharing this house, guys. It's ready. Tomorrow we're all starting new jobs. Glass clink. And the question on our, everybody's lips is, are you ready? I just keep telling myself, it's literally tens of thousands of people who are exactly in my position are going to be going on the wards. At least one of these people are going to make a worse, make a worse than, mistake than, than me. And that's what keeping me going. Look on the bright side. People did, did it before us. No reason why we can't do it exactly. You'll never, you'll never be ready for it. If you have to deal, you just, you just have to deal with it. Just it's just that, that the episode of ER with the fireman has have anyone else seen it? You're not brazing your entire medical fears on that, basing your my, my entire medical fears on that have been seen on TV. I know it's so scary, so horrible. What do you think it's like? You make mistakes on people that can die. Isn't that crazy? Nah, it scares me quite a lot. 
As soon as he gets ready to bed, new responsibility starts to weigh in her mind. Worst case is that someone could be really sick and could die, or it could be a sick child or something. Things that just kind of knock on you, knock you emotionally. I think the scariest thing is about because scariest things because you don't know how you're going to cope. How are you this morning? Good. He yawns. It's day one of their new jobs. Adam's first year. He's only graduated a f- few weeks ago. Be working as a doctor for the first time. We really don't want to look stupid and compared to my peers. He starts the job and everything and everyone else. Seems to be coping well. I'm coping really badly, you know. I'm working. I'm worried that I'm going to try really hard and fail. I'm not feeling very well. I don't feel ideal, but hopefully I'm better at the do- as the door day goes by. Day goes by. Despite having done a year, the ward second year, Susie is still serious. I am scared because I need to send pa- patients home from the hospital without speaking to anyone else. That scares me because then you've got the potential to send people home that are really sick. On his first day, Adam's keen to impress, to, keen to dress to impress. You get a lot of respect when you dress properly, when you're wearing good clothes. I think it's important to t- take look good on the job. I've got my new trainers at for A&E f- and everything. They're pink. I need pink trainers because I've got a pink sephagot. So I need to coordinate my coordinate, coordinate my shoes and my stethoscope. I'd like to wait to see how things turn out. If you apply some pressure, Susie's working in Newcastle General Hospital in accident emergency. A&E is demanding and predictable. If over 200 cases a day... These are our new team. Today, Susie starts with full induction. We right into the restoration room and monitoring bay. And he left other free rooms for walk-in type patients. Shoulder injuries and things. So that's fairly low intensity. Any questions? What I'd like to know now is to, 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 like to do now is divide your guys up into groups. If you're twos or threes each, choose your groups. I'll be come back to you. I think it's quite difficult, especially as a junior doctor, first few days, they're under tremendous pressure. They have to get stuck in. They have to work right from day one. One of the things you will see in junior doctors is that they, we call the frozen doctor syndrome. I come across a critical case. They don't know what to do. Alarm sounds. I'm Susie. Nerve. About to be put to the test. There's an emergency coming in. Susie's all set. Patient heart has stopped beating. If your team's, it's a team's job to try and get it started again. We're waiting for a cardiac arrest. Call it come in. So everyone's just waiting, ready to go. Really excited, but really also really scared. I'm trying to get my bits and pieces together, gathered. Susie, are you happy to check? Yeah, okay. Are you happy to shock? Can do. I haven't shot anyone before. You haven't? No. Okay, fine. I'll show you then. This is the first time Susie experiences emergency like this. Been at a rest, been, been at a rest beds before. But never in any situation. But so this is a bit different. Yeah, the pressure's on, but I, I want pressure, so that's fine. So our employers, paramedics have got the patient's heart started. The ambulance, but the patient arrives in a critical condition. He's on route with e, e, ST Evelation, am I? He's rested in the ambulance with VTAC. Paramedics shock him out of the, of the VTAC. He's now in sinus with them. His blood pressure at one, one four remains unconscious. Susie, first job is to take blood. Win. Haven't got too much blood out. Get some more on the other side as well. Patient's unconscious, but his body's withering because of the Celsius oxygen in his brain. If you come around to the that side, the codroid ring is just under the Adam's ring. And when he starts to go up, we need to direct pressure back back onto the bed. 
We need to put a tube in the patient's lung to help him breathe. Susie needs to apply pressure in his throat, stabilise the windpipe. All night, try and relax for me, sweetheart. Try and relax for a second. All right. That's that's fine. Okay, done. well done. Okay. Finally, the patient's been stabilised, ready to be transferred to a specialist department. Probably one of the most difficult I've seen for a long time. The reason was it was so difficult because he was a, uh, so competitive. Combative. Due to the cut of rest, his brain was not getting the action. The brain was starved of action. The action itself of Susie was absolutely brilliant. She just got stuck in. She did a few tasks which were are quite difficult. She's confident in what she did. Didn't take long to make decisions. So I think she's very good. Susie made a good first impression, but she isn't all, she isn't always taken seriously. Most people at age about nineteen twenty, I had I had sixteen before I took twelve. Did you get your ID, Susie? Yes, I have my ID. I'm blonde. I like the colour pink and I'm a bit girly. I like wearing dresses. I like getting glammed up. People are always un- really surprised when they find out I'm a doctor. I was shopping in Leeds once. I was wearing a short skirt and boots. I could see this man on the ground. Who? I was unconscious, so I went, I'm a doctor, and everyone went, and I was like, I am a doctor, and no one bleed. I think, they think that, that I haven't got a brain, and don't work hard. But you know, I work hard, and this is how I got here. I would like people to think that I was a doctor, because, because it's that, it's got the kind of spect and things. I am a doctor, so maybe I should get some, some of that sometimes. Oh, it's only the first day. In a new job, but Susie's already starting to get the recognition she's been waiting for. It's a little scary because it isn't what a picture t- t- today you being. I would, I would be, would be sit and have a chat. So this is how f- everything works. But it's A and E. You don't have it. Isn't how A and E goes. So enjoying it for it though, it's good. So Anne Wells, while Susie's getting to grips with a new job, her housemate Adam, Lucy, and Catherine are also starting work. We're all three, this would be the first experience working as doctors. I'm thinking, I just want to prove to everyone that I'm a good doctor. Now I'm going to go about, I mean, how am I going to go about that, about doing that? Adam's joining Ward 52 Respiratory. He have to deal with, with seriously ill patients who have had breathing difficulties, lung disease. Most important thing today, getting through the day, I say not kill, I'm not, I say I'm not killing anyone. I think everyone's quite stable, uh, and just make, making sure they're good uh, uh, to your patients, and you'll get ev- and you'll get everything done. So I just got some bloods to do, just the kind of routine bloods, just making sure no infections. Adam gets his uh, hands on his first proper patient. Henry, eighty-one years old, eighty-one years old. I am Adam. Well, um, would it be all right to get some blood from you? I've got to get the back pudding, I've got to go to the black pudding factory. You'll singly handily, handily, uh, you'll singly handily keep an open, sharp scratch. I'm sorry. Oh, careful. You don't need to prick yourself. Right. Can you just hold that for me for a second? That'll be all right. A bit of a bruise. I'm sorry. Harry has suspected Anderson disease, but can I remember what he learned from, well, when to put on the, Put to the test by seeing a doctor. Do you think that that Addison, what, do you know what Addison's disease is? Do you know what the original Addison's disease was? It's original, right? I'm thinking, trying to think whether this is, is, is the original Addison's disease from Pitt, from Pitt? No, it's primary, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what, what you're thinking? Anyone, any time, never, Mine, so it's primary odorial failure. What did Anderson describe on the post mortem? The granule groans. And so it's actually causing annual destruction. Annual destruction. Was it an moon? It, it was TB, TB, the worst, worst worldwide year. I got fussed because it's difficult. 
when you are well, first day to the doctor. People are trying to press, assess how much you know, what level of compensa- compensa- compensancy you're at, and you want to so want so badly to make good first impression. That's the pressure that I know I could come out with all these things, but actually coming out with them is a difficult sto- different story. I could have sounded really smart. I didn't sound really smart. I sounded sh- Stupid. Without him, they're trying to find his feet. When they him, they're trying to find his feet. Susie's back in the deep end with another emergency. A woman has been admitted following an overdose. Can you speak to me? My name is Susie. I'm one of the doctors. I need you to ask. I need. What need you to ask? you some questions. Get me some options as well. And near Susie needs to find out what she's taken, whether the dog contour is lethal. Can I have a quick look in your eyes then? If that's okay. How, how are you? But a sample would provide us with her view to provide clues. But first she needs to calm the patient down. Trying to get her as much oxygen as we can and trying to get her to respond. Relax. Just leave that. That arm, um, it hurts. Been checking your blood pressure. It's running, hurting me. You're just trying to make you feel a little bit better. Come and here, have a lie down. Come on. So that's better, isn't it? And here we go. If you once want some blood, we're not sure if it's the best time. What a shame. Because it would be really useful, wouldn't it? It might give us a gauge to what, what she's taken. We just managed to get some, get blood pressure of a leg. Because if you put it on her arm, she withers around a lot. He's, she is hyperphonically stable, which means her blood pressure is fine, her pulse is fine, the patient is very much settled. Susie's shift comes to an end, and now down to the night team to try and help the patient. Back at the home, Susie catches up with the other junior doctors. How was your first day, a learning curve like this? Back to yourself. My first patient was a cardiac arrest, an ambulance who was been, t- who was then taken there. He says he was like, "Do you not want to help me?" I was like, "Yeah, I suppose," but he was good. But he was really sick. But yeah, yeah, of course. But yeah, I've kind of enjoyed it. Did you? Mm-hmm. Stressful but enjoyable. Yeah. I guess I was a little jealous as soon as he was doing A and E because it's something I really want. There's something that that I really want to get grips with, you know. You know, do this with a patient. Take this. Do the, the this procedure. To get, give him his medicine. Inject the this. Blah blah. Susie comes back with loads of stories from A and E. That was like awesome. Adam doesn't see himself as a terrible doctor. One, two, three, four. Oh, Dara. If you ask my friends, to describe me. You probably say I was a cheeky. Some would say I'm borderline on sleazy. That's not true. I would say I'm just being myself. He's got a terrible ter- reputation, nurses. That's, well, that's all I'm saying. There have been a few weeks, t- tears. My dad's a responsible doctor. Since I was six, I wanted to follow in his footsteps. My mum's also a doctor. My brother's a doctor. My mum's mother was a doctor back in the day. There's a massive pedigree within the family I'm going had to live up to. I always put too much pressure on myself, always really hard on myself. I never say I'm done a good job unless I'm done the best job. I would want to make a difference as many people as possible to something that's absolutely huge. Essence wants to save the world. He starts another day. And it's optimistic for Adam to make his, make his mark. Make his mark. He's hit with a mountain and paperwork. I'm rubbish paperwork. Probably because I don't care. And paperwork. About paperwork. I care about people. I need this. You, you need to do this. I need you to sort this out. It's just not simulating at all. You are the skivvy, the world bitch, basically. The bit, part of me that wants me to do medicine. I really want some complex tasks to figure out. And not long before... He finds one. I dropped some stuff in here. After five years of medical training, Adam at last has a chance to practice his surgical skills. I don't even, I don't even need this pen. I just really wanted to get it out. I almost got it. I mean to get it now because it'll be, 
be in, it'll be there forever. Otherwise, this looks sweet. Okay. Lesson to learn. Don't drop these within, without being in bags. Well, a lesson to learn. Don't drop these in without, without them being in bags. While the job's not yet living up to Adam's expectations, the other housemates are sending into the new world. So I have a dilemma. These people came at 20 minutes beforehand. But this isn't the gentleman slightly sicker. You're not, is there, is there not an arrow or which, or you might, he's not an on an arrow or, we might sew up the ear by a possible mistake. That won't be set. And that will be silly. Lucy is starting work in the gynecology. She's treating each patient with digestive, pro- digestive problems, including a le- her liver disease caused by alcohol boost. You need to be careful on that. Alcohol made patients are quiet, difficult to treat, agitated and aggressive, and quite sm- and can start smashing the place up. For the first year, Lucy is learning to dealing with addiction. A port of saving lives. I'm Lucy. I'm one of the June doctors on this ward. And just tell me a little about, about what's brought you here to, brought you into the hospital. They, these, no, there's notes here. But it's easier if you tell me a bit, a bit, tell me a bit of yourself about, if you tell me a bit yourselves. Pain. What pain have you been having? The legs? For the first year, Lucy's learning to dealing with addiction. It's important of saving lives. Lucy, I'm one of the junior doctors at Wald. Just tell me a little bit about what brought you into this hospital. There's notes here. It seems... Lesson to learn, don't drop them in without them being in the bags. Well, the job's not yet living up to protect Adam's stations. The other housemates are slightly in to a new job, so I'm out of a dilemma. Your people came in 20 minutes beforehand, but this gentleman's slightly sicker. If not an hour on, you might sew up that ear by mistake. It would be silly. Lucy started working in gynecology. You're treating patients with digestive problems, including liver disease, caused by alcohol boost. You need to be careful with that. Alcoholic patients are more difficult to treat. They get agitated and aggressive, start smashing the place up. For the first year, Lucy, learning to deal with addiction, as pro- important as saving lives. I'm Lucy, one of the junior doctors on this ward. Just tell me a little bit about what's brought you into the hospital. There's notes here, but it's easier if you tell me a little bit yourself, pain. pain. What pain have you been having? Oh, I le- my legs. The legs? Okay. I understand... As well that you have been sick and have some no some bleeding. I see I was I was you see. Well I'm alcoholic. I used to drink twenty cans a day. Cans? Lager lager. I reduce I would I am then I reduce, reduce, reduce. I now I can only take two max. I don't get drunk anymore. I really, really don't. If you can call off You see, I'm alcoholic. I used to drink 20 cans a day. Cans of lager, lager. They reduced to reduce now. I only take a two max. I don't drink anymore. I really don't, don't, really don't, really don't. You come off completely. That would be the best bet. Eventually, because obviously, it's your liver's damage already. Is any alcohol not going to, any alcohol is not going to make it any better? Oh, I know, I know. Okay, that's, thanks very much. A great to be part of the team. Proper role within, within this working team in the middle of the big hospital. It's quite, really quite exciting. Can you speak to me? My name is Susie. I'm one of the doctors. I'm Amy Susie, back in the emergency front line. 32 year old Chris is suffering from a serious diabetic, epileptic fit and Susie and the team urgently need to stop it. We're, we're up here from London. Has, he's forgot his medication. Yeah, I know. How long do they normally last for? 
I'm not too sure. But, but the last one that took one that had that he had when we came up here and it was about an hour and a half. A long seizure like this can cause brain damage or even can be fatal. So she checks her drugs guide. She urgently needs a prescribed at night. The right antileptic. It was quite serious if he can, if he had such a, a long, long life earlier. We need to put those anti-epileptic drugs in him, into him. Drugs are given in vitreously. A patient starts to gain consciousness. Sorry we've been poking fun from all sides, but yes, they're just there to help you. It's really important. You like, you know you hear me, Chris, right? Just t- t- try your way, very best, lady babes. We haven't had his anti androgenic seizure medics, medics, and not for long, for coming on for two days, a day and a half. So we've just given him something to stop the fit, for the same, for the same, for the time being. Ellen, better than anything, better than nothing. We're going to a wedding party tomorrow. Wedding tomorrow. He's going. Doing the first reading in the wedding. It starts at two o'clock. I don't know if he's going to make it. I know because that's because of his all his fits, which should be diff shame. It should be a shame. But uh, he had his anti epileptics. The problem wouldn't have been with uh, what happened. As soon as he emerges, am I going to I know you can hear me, Chris, right? Just uh, your very, very best babes. We haven't had any epileptic medicine but coming on two days, a day and a half. We've given him something to stop the fit for some time being. Anything's better than nothing. You're going to a wedding tomorrow. You're going to be, be doing the first reading at the wedding. It starts at 2 p.m. I don't know if he's going to make it now. Just because of all the fits, which, which would be a strain. But if I had, uh, if I had his antisept, anti-epileptics, it wouldn't probably have happened. So, uh, as soon as he emerges, emerges, continue rolling. Adam's day fills up. Some more run the mill jobs. Sixty and seventy percent of the jobs provided people, prob, or the job probably paper, I reckon. At JCPenney's 4th of July sale, it's all stars, stripes, and savings. Enjoy up to 50% off select furniture, mattresses, and window coverings. Plus, shop thousands of doorbusters across the store or use your coupon for additional savings. Take advantage of extended store hours Friday and Saturday. It's time to refresh your star-spangled manor. Shopping is back. JCPenney. Offers in 7-4. Exclusions apply. Doorbusters excluded from coupons. See jcp.com for details. This podcast is brought to you by Grant Thornton, an audit, tax, and advisory firm you already have something in common with. They listen too. Grant Thornton takes the time to truly understand your challenges, uncovering inspired solutions that help you turn them into opportunities. Because business today needs fresh perspective, not more noise. Start a conversation at gt.com. Isn't that something that's the new second new John knows all too well. Erwin has a has a doctor to see patients, treat patients, but not to uh, pay for and write letters. That's all we've done. That's all we had had all these days. Unfortunately, it's, it's got to be done. When Erwin's not doing paper, he's taking blood, bloods of paperwork, bloods of paper or paperwork. Adam still feels there uh, like he's he's a little he's. Not making his mark, but over in his gastro ward, Lucy next job is specifically and the thing has left is for her to go and do a PR examination. Thanks. Looks like I'm drawn a short straw. Yes, that per that per retro, known as a business as a PR. Bottom internal bottom end investigation. This. And this is this is first time I've never had a full on shoots.
No one has been as PR the international bottom examination. This is Lucy's first time. He never had to, he never had to perform while a student. Adam still feels like he's not making his mark. Over the gastro world, Lucy's job is certainly his special his speciality. The only thing that's left to you to go to his PR examination thanks. Looks like drawing on the right short straw, yes. That per retral. Known in business PR or internal bottom examination. This is Lucy's first time never to perform one on as a student. I mean we all done well done well we've done them on modules. Models, but no, they are models, bottoms. They are used to practice these things. On, oh, I st- still be pain free as possible. Second job, John has had a year of practice, so he's an old hand in a retro examination. Oh, so that's a small amount of jelly on my finger, all right? Sinking your finger up someone's bottom isn't the most pleasant job. I'll be lying. I said it was. So you just pull your trousers down, keep your nails for me. I obviously don't reveal the fact that I have never actually done one before. But you want, if you, if I excuse cause of confidence with it, even if it's inside your, your thinking, oh my goodness, at least the patient has confidence in what you're doing. You can roll onto your left side. You put a glove on, it's not really optional. You're playing what's happening. I'm going to put some lubricant on my finger, okay? Then get, then, Get them and scrunch their, knee, their knees up to their up to their chest. Then it's going to scrunch their knees up to the chest. I just try and relax as much as possible. I'm going to put my finger just into your bottom. You have to rise above the embarrassment factor. Because the patient's more scared about the experience than you are. Shouldn't be too painful. It might. Just feel a bit strange. Perfect. All right. All done. My first ever experience. First ever first experience. I want to put my. I went to put my finger in. The diarrhea started coming out. Sat down and ran down my hand. And you kind of saw it. It go, comes the brim of the glove. Then went over the beam of the glove and to my arm. For I was like this morning, meaning. This is meaning I'm going to take my finger out now. So all around are rather strange experiences, I suppose. But something that's very important. That day shift's coming to an end and Adam's wrapping up for the day. I'm trying to get some jobs for tomorrow. Sorted. And I'm hopeful I can come tomorrow and not be like a clown late this morning. I just wanted to be more important more prepared so I kind of hit the ground running at home and in what rents his frustrations I haven't used the, my brain since finals and everybody thinks I'm really thick even these things that don't seem important they really are even though it's sometimes, it seems you haven't really been trained to feel in forms every day I'm really bored if I get simulated not simulated I'm not simulated so I just feel like I'm not really doing anything oh you're through you have the day when you have to go when you have to go the day when you have to go and deal with your patients family think less less you have a, you've got a really big plans for you know what I want to get I want to get off with my medicine Um, there's a lot of fever work, a lot of routine stuff. I must go to make take that one. And I'm just going to have to take that one and chin and know I'm doing a good thing, even if I'm not not as stimulating as I would have hoped. Adam's not the only one struggling. Catherine's also starting to feel the pressure being a junior doctor. I'm worried it's going to be like a, a never ending story. I worry that everything's going to take me so long that I'm just not going to get home until like 10 p.m. Because every job's going to give to get, take me just for a bit longer because I don't really know what I'm doing. And because I'm the only one in the ward, the only junior in the ward, I don't really mean, don't really mean, don't really have anybody to share this job with. 
and not anything like that. Katrina working at the plastic surgery department. One of her first jobs is to take bloods, but it isn't proving easy to find a vein. The arm's quite swollen. Think it's going to take be quite difficult. I can't see. I can't just can't see or feel the vein at all. I want to take it out of that arm. I can do. I can. I don't want to take it out of that, that arm. I could do your foot. I can see a little one there. Put on a tunicay on. Yeah, I'll put a tunicay on. It's quite small. Don't know if I can make it bigger though. A tunicay. Have it to go. That's all. That, have a go. That's if if that's all right. I'm really not convinced it's going to work. No, that's not going to go. Sorry about that. That's quite embarrassing. I can't get blood, thanks. Patient needs blood taking. It's really difficult finding a vein. So I'm going to have to phone someone more senior to ask them what I should do about it. Quite a bit embarrassing. But once you sees the veins, I don't think it mind. Hi, Catherine. I'm sorry to phone you. This is really embarrassing, but I've got a patient. Can't get a vein on her anywhere. So I tried, so I tried to foot, but I can't get it. Oh, thanks very much. Cheers, bye. So I hope it's on its way. I just go and get the, let the nurse know. When Adams managed to take blood from the patient, he missed the deadline on the lab. Because I did it after five, it means I have to get it sent in a taxi, which means I'm running with the head nurse's Doreen. Doreen, would it possible to get a taxi for sample blood? Go Freeman, Mercology, Biology. After five, and I don't really didn't rise. It's after five. You have you have to write. You have to check with patient services because we're not using taxis because of the cost. Yeah, right. I ring and check. Thank you. Thanks. Sorry about that. I could probably check it before I t- take his blood. Doreen doesn't kn- knows I'm new. She knows I'm not a twat. I'm, and that. And so that I have learned uh, what I will learn from it. But you know, I can imagine Doreen could get angry, but it's probably here kind of nice, but I'm not impressed. It should be doing long, been long done before five o'clock. The thing is, he's quite right. Because it was six and told me to do it in an hour before his gentry thing, I didn't realise I had to go to send to the freeman. I know now, at least I know you, how, how, you know, well, okay, anyway, sorry about that, <coughs> <coughs> thanks, thank you very much, you're welcome, all junior doctors, or any nurses to help them, get grips for the job, and this is fantastic, screwed without them, it's a new, are they new in the job, hospital, they don't necessarily know how the system works, it's our job to try and tell them, it doesn't make a point, of going in and making, saying, look, I know, I know you knew. It must be horrible. If there's anything you're not sure about, ask. Do you know you get medical degrees, iPhones? Ah, oh, she laughs. We're all students work once. We all had to start at the bottom. You got to cut them a bit of slack. Despite sport from the nursing staff, first year Chris Freen is finding the workload demanding. Do you want to help us to help you? I've got so much to do, stuff to do, mobile rings. Well, you've got patients who've been waiting an hour and a half. Then a clinic. Hello, are we busy? We've got a, a lot of different charge today. We've already got names waiting for, uh, to go to, on the beds. Will you mind if I, have, if I do these, bud? I'm a bit more sordid after I've done these. I'm trying to help her, but I couldn't write scripts for her or anything like that. A second year housemate make her in more experience. Cross this out for now. I will come back and do and do that when uh yeah. I've got quite a lot of jobs to do still. Right, just stop that. Just stop them. The busier you are, the more you need to stop. Okay, let's let's stop. Go through and list the stuff and write it out of all the priority. Catherine's learning. You have to be tough to make make it as a doctor, like. I think a ballet because it's quite girly and pretty. I think I like ballet because it looks girly and pretty. We have to really be, be really tough to do it. My first year in university I failed my two, my exams. I'd spend an entire summer studying. That was hard. 
It's hard, a loss of confidence. I really had a chip on my shoulder. It wasn't good enough to be there. I was working as hard as anyone else, but no one else had passed and fa- I failed. It was really difficult to build up my confidence after that. She always works very hard. She knows that she wants everything else. just floats by her, really. I think she comes across as some smiley, bubbly little girl. But actually, she's pretty resilient. I definitely feel I have work of things. I want to achieve something. I'm only a day, few days into a job. A lot of work at, work at. Water level is the next priority. That's children. Children are important to, d- to deal with quickly. I'll do that. Okay. But then we have lots of discharge scripts that need writing. We've got drug charts that have been copied, that need copying up. Now that we're at five o'clock, four o'clock, there'll be people who won't get, won't get home tonight. We don't start getting through discharges. Okay, after a tough week, Catherine lets off a steam to boyfriend Tim. Hey, how's it going? I find it really stressful. I feel out of depth. I can't, I just come along, uh, come home thinking, what if it doesn't get better? What if I actually can't do a good job? I don't know, I don't know if I cut out to do this. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to develop a bit, bit of thicker skin. It's a weekend, a big night out in Newcastle. Catherine gets to see Tim for the first time since she moved here. Yeah, yeah, we bring the stars out. We bring the women and the cars and car, cars and cars out. Adam, Andy, and Kerr, John are on a boys night out. Susie already getting ready for no Friday night action. She's about to start her first set of night shifts. Friday night in Newcastle. So I think it's going to be pretty busy. Weekends are the busiest nights of casualty. UK one billion people a year taking the hospital after drinking. Ain't any scares a scary job because you don't know what's coming in for the door. One country in t- ten. Is someone that's well, someone that's sick. And Susie to Buck to Bachelor is going to be really busy. At the pubs, bars are closed. It's going to get busier. A bit scary to shout. I heard you usually have paramedics on standby here. But right now it seems, what are you, where are you tonight? Not been in my, any hinder trouble. Hey, add in a few more drinks a couple of hours time. I like good luck, Susie. Around here, A&E, the countries are piling up. Susie will find it hard. She notices the night is completely different. It's like a war zone. There are bodies everywhere. She need, she'll have to be more, do more. Pressure on her will be intense. Said it, said it changes when the sun goes down. Friday and Sunday nights can be ridiculously busy. Things that, as you expect, can be related, can be related to alcohol. Which can be a bit challenging at times. Beep, calm down. Around here, Susie's struggling to find a fixed patient. Amongst the mayhem, no, my God. A guy's here in the corridor, the fluid's on. Not surprising she's finding it hard to locate him. He's conscious on trolley. Let him into the room, shall we? The apartment sees of average of 20, 220 patients over the weekend. Can one, one in five can be treated by it for alcohol related problems? Can you squeeze my fingers, please? Squeeze them. I think he's a little bit too much to drink. He's got, we've got fluid coming, going in to sober him up. One of the doctors here. Are you, are you, how are you feeling? He snorts. A good time. Enjoy a drink out or drink when I'm out. But I've never been to A&E. Bonus. Night shifts and regular hours are part of the parcel. The doctor's life as fast mates are discovering. You have some such peculiar shift shirt patterns. We have such peculiar kind of lifestyles that's not me. You end up having to socialize with a lot of people that you work with as well. They work long hours and no one's going to understand that, apart from other doctors, because they have to do the same thing. You never say, I will definitely be finished by time. I'll definitely finish this time. Sometimes something might crop up and you have to stay. Out of seven, out of the seven doctors, junior doctors living together, Susie's having the toughest week. Susie, the patient, is sober, but in a lot of pain. Hello. Obviously, you see, your problem is, everything is. Are you fine for me looking, or would you rather have a guy? You're fine, yeah. Turning stitches have a split, following a recent operation to his testicle. So, where is it, has that been sore? Right here? It's all round here, there. There, it feels like somebody's keeping hold of them, squeezing them. Probably speak to a neurologist about that. It's really quite inflamed still, isn't it? Right, oh, I'll go and have a chat with them and pop back. Cheers, thanks again, cheers. Don't mess with it. 
I give you whatever I'll give away was on call in urology. He wants someone to have a look at. Right. And Amy, don't even have my own te- haven't seen testicle. And Amy, I haven't even seen any testicle before. As a medical student, I saw them a couple of times, but not, not a lot of times. Pitch is quite a good way of passing in on the information clearly. That's why I'm, I'm drawing pictures. If you don't need to, I wouldn't, because I'm terrible at art. Things awkward with displaying a man's testicles at the same age as me. If it was me, it'd be weird if I was a man looking. If I had any problems down here or anything. It doesn't bother me being seen by female doctors, you know. Just as long as I'm getting rid of the pain, that's the main thing. So he gives him some painkillers and tend, sends him to the theatre to be re-stitched. Housemates are getting, feeling the impact of their new jobs. My day was quite hectic. I don't feel... I feel it's less of a job and some more sort of sick in the initial ceremony to allow you to be a real doctor. I don't think being a doctor is all it's cracked up to me. It's just, it's, I'm just being a war bitch. You're saying that you feel you experienced enough to be a doctor? Do you really feel to get ready to give someone diagnosis they've only got three weeks to live? Yes. Are you sure you really? Are you sure you could actually tell someone they got free, got weeks to live? Because that took me a long time to actually have the courage to say that to somebody. It's not easy. There's nothing more they can do without being, without actually being a doctor. But yeah, I do, do feel ready. I need the experience to hone my skills. I think it's quite dangerous in a sense to have understandable, under, understandable confidence that says, I feel sorry, ready to be a doctor. These are the sort of things you only get from decades of experience. That's, as an, that's on fire. I think that I am, um, paper, it's a paper. I've stopped it now. This week, it seems like Adam can't do anything right. He needs a chance to prove himself. You didn't realise how much crappy paperwork that is and bleep. Do you do until you start doing the job? I've been in medicine for reasons other than my entire life being taken up by doing paperwork. So I hope I'm going, it's going to change. For really, if you don't change, I don't, I'm going, I'm doing this paperwork for the rest of my days. I'll quit tomorrow. But now Adam can finally get the break he's what been waiting for. Hey, he's going on call. Covering up to the 170 patients of five wards. You'll be the first doctor to see patients and needing medical help. Mobile thing, mobile phone rings. Hello? Okay, I'm coming, thanks. I'm patiently trying to discharge yourself against medical advice. I haven't been asked to try and stop him. Hey, so you know, just want what's best for you, right? 
please, just look at me, sir. Please, please, come on. I'm not a, I'm not that bad looking. You know it's best to, to stay in hospital, don't you? You do understand I want you to stay for your asthma and get to get you better. If you go, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. It's against medical advice. I understand that. Do you understand? Yes, I do. You realize that? Yes, I do. You know, we just want to take care of you. I want to go home, despite Adam's best efforts. Patrick leaves. He won't stay in hospital, so unfortunately he's absconded against medical advice. Doesn't really know what to do, do about that. If he wanted to go, he'd probably end up going anyway. I know. Confidently forced him to stay. I did as much as I could to persuade him to stay. Did he come off? Did he come off 30 or 31? <clears throat> where, where were we before? Oh, you crap. And at last, he finally gets his first real emergency. Beeping cardiac, 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 adult RV. It's critical. It means a patient somewhere in the hospital needs immediate attention and would be, could, could be in a cardiac arrest. Hello? He needs to find a patient as quickly as possible to try to save them. Less than 10% who suffer cardiac arrest survive. He's got a pulse p- preferably. Adam takes his place in, in the crash team. Patient's unconscious, so he checks the patient's pulse. Fortunately, his heart is still beating. They give him oxygen to bring him round. You feel the adrenaline just hitting you so hard. Pumps, hot pumps being so fast you feel sick. You know you're sweating. You're like, oh, that's really what's going on here. You see someone collapsing. You need to assess the situation. You need to do something quickly and have to do just a decisive bleep. Finally, he hits us. We're actually doctors now. On the other side of the hospital, I had been called to see an 85 year old Lester with lung complaint. Tonight, his condition is deteriorated. Hi, I'm going to get you up a bit. How are you doing? Okay, he's not well. He's not well at all. And decides to investigate further. He uses a second chest x-ray. Compare the old one. I could be convinced the new one is a bit more wa- worse, actually. I think it's the heart that's the problem. It's backed up into the lungs. Yeah, I think the new one is definitely worse. Definitely. Dandem thinks the patient should be an additional medication, but he first needs to check if he's right with a senior doctor. You think I can give him fusamide? Or is it not really a decision I should be making? No, you, if you're comfortable, and you know that you're, you're not doing cold sweat. Alan's confident he's right, got it right. Yeah, I'm going to give him fusamide. I'm going to give him fusamide. I knew it. It's the first time his doctor has made a diagnosis. Beep, okay. Can we start on the form of uh, 1940? Hand it over, and she'll come over. Thanks very much. Now, that is a, what, that is different from the day job. Very different. That's why you see a doctor. First time I've been a sick patient on my own. I didn't really know what to do. Kind of sat there thinking, what's going on with this guy? And the thing is my gut sense it told me something's going on. That was pretty much it. Next day, Adam's back to check on Lester's progress. Good evening. How are you doing? The nurse, Ward nurse, has some good news. His family's chuffed to bits. It's nice to see something you put in motion has a good result. I have a chat with him. He's delighted to see you again. I'm so happy about that. Seriously, good job. Yeah, hey, hey, hello. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling much better What what, uh, what I did yesterday. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear it. So am I. It's my first real taste of doing good. So nice when you feel you've made it a difference in someone's life. Would I have a, I made, had the moment with the first week under his belt. Some of the new doc, junior doctors really get a chance to let their hair down. I'm glad we finished. Laughed the dirty laundry public. Laughter. It's really surprised actually to know uh, how I haven't hated it. I have actually quite enjoyed it. It's been good. But it's just been uh, so up and down, like really good times and really bad times, things. Really good things and really bad things. My life has changed within a week from sitting at home, playing at play bo- PlayStation, yeah, to running after crush calls, dealing with critical life agents. If you like, if you like, if, if you like, to go from nothing to like, welcome to the club. Thank you very much. All right, I do question sometimes what I'm meant to do in life. I still feel unbalanced that being a doctor, I feel, is what I'm meant to do. But I'll just have to wait to see if I feel the prophecy or not. 
The seven nights have been probably the most confused. The seventy seven nights have probably been the most challenging seven days I've had in medicine. That's what A and E is. That's what life is. You can't really moan about it or complain about it. complain. It's just something you that needs doing. Next the cod arrest. Cod arrest? John's a mercy call. You're doing well, sir. You're doing well, it's fluid. Lucy learns she can't save everyone. This poor lady has been told the worst news she's ever heard, going to hear. She's been just been told, right, you're going to go home to die. That's so. At JCPenney's 4th of July sale, it's all stars, stripes, and savings. Enjoy up to 50% off select furniture, mattresses, and window coverings. Plus, shop thousands of doorbusters across the store or use your coupon for additional savings. Take advantage of extended store hours Friday and Saturday. It's time to refresh your star-spangled manner. Shopping is back. JCPenney. Offers in 74 Exclusions apply. Doorbusters excluded from coupons. See jcp.com for details. Finding the right person for the job isn't easy. Just ask someone who hired a drama coach to be an IT guy. Yeah, I'm having trouble logging in. I'm not buying it. Say it again. This time with feeling. I can't log in? Come on, man. I want to feel your struggle. But if you've got an insurance question, you can always count on your local GEICO agent. They can bundle your policies, which could save you hundreds. Now, like your life depends on it. I can't log in. Yes, we'll make an actor out of you yet. For expert help with all your insurance needs, visit GEICO.com local today.